It's Patrick Hutzel from IntensiveCareHotline.com where we instantly improve the lives of families of critically ill patients in intensive care so that you can have peace of mind, real power, real control and so that you can influence decision making fast even if you're not a doctor or a nurse in intensive care. In last week's blog I've shown you the elephant in the room or how the intensive care team is making decisions whilst your loved one is critically ill in intensive care. You can check out last week's update by clicking on the link below this video. In this week's blog I want to show you five ways you are unconsciously sabotaging yourself whilst your loved one is critically ill in intensive care and how to stop doing it. After I have worked with literally thousands of critically ill patients in their families in intensive care in more than 15 years of intensive care nursing in three different countries I have gained tremendous insights into the psychology and the behavior of families of critically ill patients in intensive care. I have also gained tremendous insights into the psychology, the dynamics, the intrigue and the power play that is going on in intensive care behind the scenes. If you are thinking about it, it's a powerful mixture. On the one hand, working with and effectively dealing with the challenges, the frustrations, the fears, the struggles, the vulnerabilities and the stress critically ill patients and their families are going through and on the other hand, having the insider knowledge of how intensive care units operate, how they function on a deep psychological level and also what interests intensive care units really have and how it might impact on the care and treatment that is being delivered or not delivered. It is therefore that both areas, the patients and their families in intensive care and the dynamics and what's happening behind the scenes in intensive care make such powerful ingredients for a blog like intensivecarehotline.com. And because I have gained so much insight into what's really happening in intensive care, on a deep psychological level, I have also found that most families of critically ill patients in intensive care are not naturally armed with having peace of mind, power, control and influence when they are having a loved one critically ill in intensive care. Most families in intensive care, in fact, and I would even say almost 99% of families in intensive care have no peace of mind, control, power and influence when they are faced with the challenge of having a loved one critically ill in intensive care. This is even more so true if those families and their critically ill loved one are facing one of those challenges such as they are very unstable and in a very critical condition. They are in a life-threatening situation. They are in intensive care for long-term treatments and long-term stays, including severe head and brain injuries. Or if they are approaching their end of life in intensive care. Now, families of critically ill patients often react with panic, overwhelm, frustration and they simply think that they can't have peace of mind, control, power and influence whatsoever in those challenging situations. And the intensive care team, generally speaking, doesn't want you to have control, power and influence because they are having their own agenda that they need to continuously drive forward. And if you and your family are like 99% of families of critically ill patients in intensive care who have no peace of mind, control, power and influence, you will continue in undermining and sabotaging yourself with the direct result that the intensive care team will have all the power, control and influence in this challenging and often once in a lifetime situation. And the unfortunate reality is that the intensive care team will make decisions for you and for your critically ill loved one that often aren't in your and your critically ill loved one's best interest and they are self-serving for the intensive care team and are in the interest of driving the intensive care team's agenda. 
Therefore, you need to stop the five ways you are unconsciously sabotaging yourself whilst your loved one is critically ill in intensive care. And here I will show you how you stop doing it. So, let's look at number one. Stop being intimidated by the intensive care team. 99% of families of critically ill patients in intensive care are consciously or unconsciously intimidated by the intensive care team. You can stop doing that and you can let go of it now. There is no need for it. You can let go of all the wrong conditioning by society who has told us for centuries that doctors must know what's best. The reality is that with intensive care being a multi-billion dollar industry nowadays, the intensive care team has interests that go way beyond your critically ill loved one's diagnosis and prognosis. And therefore, if you don't stop being intimidated by the intensive care team, you and your family will have no peace of mind, no control, no power and no influence, period. Number two, you and your family only see your critically ill loved one's situation and you keep forgetting the situation that the intensive care team's agenda and goals has. If I only had a dollar for every family in intensive care who doesn't see the bigger picture and whose only focus is on their critically ill loved ones prognosis and diagnosis. It's very important and you certainly need to have an understanding about those issues. However, especially during those massively challenging situation where your critically ill loved one is in one of those challenging challenging situations where they are either very unstable and in a very critical condition or if they are in a life-threatening situation or if they are in intensive care for long-term treatments and long-term stays including severe head and brain injuries or if they are even approaching their end of life in intensive care it's very easy for the intensive care team to paint a doom and gloom picture and it's also easy for the intensive care team to paint a more positive picture and by doing that they can continue to drive their agenda which is often driven by the bed status in intensive care for example do they need beds for more admissions or do they need to keep their beds filled because the intensive care unit is currently quiet it's also driven by the medical research interests. For example, is your critically ill loved one falling into a medical research category or are they not falling into a medical research category? Hence, is the intensive care team interested in continuing treatment or not continuing treatment for your critically ill loved one? This is often irrespective of the clinical diagnosis and prognosis. Also, does the intensive care team think that they can earn money or do they think they lose money by continuing treating your critically ill loved one? Let's move on to number three. You and your family take everything for face value the intensive care team is telling you. I strongly recommend that you and your family question everything that the intensive care team is telling you and also what they're not telling you. I therefore also strongly recommend that you and your family don't take everything for face value that the intensive care team is telling you. This is even more so important if your critically ill loved one is in a difficult and challenging situation like I've mentioned before. Let's move on to number four. You show poor body language. I know I have mentioned this before and if you've been following this blog for a while you've heard it before but it's so important that I need to mention it again. 99% of families of critically ill patients in intensive care who have no peace of mind, no control, no power and no influence have extremely poor body language when they first come to intensive care and their body language literally screams that they have no peace of mind, no control, no power and no influence. Your job is to become aware that you are displaying poor body language so
so that you can change it. After you have changed your body language from poor and negative body language to a more positive and powerful body language, I bet the intensive care team will take notice and your level of control, power and influence will have increased just by you changing your body language. Remember, only 7% of our communication is with our words and more than 60% of our communication is with our body. Therefore, make use of it. Last but not least, let's look at point number five. You and your family don't realize how much peace of mind, control, power and influence you can have if you only armed yourself with the right information. Most families of critically ill patients in intensive care let things happen to them rather than taking action, getting informed and starting to ask the right questions. Most families of critically ill patients in intensive care also think they are at the mercy of the intensive care team and they therefore act submissive and they therefore simply don't even contemplate that peace of mind, control, power and influence is even a real possibility. Most families of critically ill patients in intensive care also don't seek out the right information and they simply don't arm themselves with the weapons and tools that will counteract the perceived authority and the perceived power of the intensive care team that is a shortcut to peace of mind, control, power and influence. How do you do that and how can you have peace of mind, control, power and influence whilst your loved one is critically ill in intensive care? You get to that all-important feeling of peace of mind, control, power and influence when you download your free instant impact report now by entering your email below. In your free instant impact report you learn quickly how to get peace of mind, real power and real control and how you can influence decision making fast whilst your loved one is critically ill in intensive care. In your, your free instant impact report gives you in-depth insight that you must know whilst your loved one is critically ill or is even dying in intensive care. Sign up and download your free instant impact report now by entering your email below. In your free instant impact report you learn how to speak the secret intensive care language so that the doctors and the nurses know straight away that you are an insider and that you know and understand what's really happening in intensive care. In your free instant impact report you will also discover how to ask the doctors and the nurses the right questions. Discover the many competing interests in intensive care and how your critically ill loved one's treatment may depend on those competing interests. How to eliminate fear, frustration, stress, struggle and vulnerability even if your loved one is dying. You get five killer tips and strategies helping you to get on the right path to peace of mind, control, power and influence in your situation. You'll get real world examples that you can easily adapt to your and your critically ill loved one's situation. How to stop being intimidated by the intensive care team and how you will be seen as equals. You'll get crucial behind the scenes insights so that you know and understand what's really happening in intensive care. And how you need to manage doctors and nurses in intensive care and it's not what you think. Thank you for tuning into this week's blog and I'll see you again in another update next week. Make sure you also check out our Your Questions Answered where we answer your questions or send me an email to support at intensivecarehotline.com with your questions. This is Patrick Hutzel from intensivecarehotline.com and I'll see you again next week in another update.